the stock market has been schizophrenic all year. So the big question that many people are asking themselves is, where do you safely park your cash and still get a decent return? And that's exactly what I'll be discussing today. At a time when interest rates are at an all-time high, then fixed income assets like treasuries, CDs, I-bonds, and high-yield checking accounts start to look very attractive. If you haven't been looking at these investments in the past, now is a good time to educate yourself. And of course, there'll be a handful of people out there saying, but Brian, the stock market is about to correct and fixed income assets don't even meet inflation. And it is true that these assets don't match inflation, but for people that need cash stored away for potential liquidity in the short term, well, they need some mechanism to safely invest their money until they need it. Let's say you are someone who is saving $50,000 to remodel your kitchen, but you plan to wait two years to begin. This gives you a safe spot for your cash while you finalize the details of the renovation. Or you may be putting away a few thousand dollars so you can take that family trip in less than a year. Or maybe you're near retirement age or you are retired, but time isn't on your side to write out the ups and downs of the stock market. In which case, you want more of your investments in fixed income assets that have more stable returns. In either case, fixed asset investments are risk averse and they're meant to safeguard your short-term cash. But when it comes to treasury, CDs, I-bonds, and high-yield savings accounts, which one is right for the scenarios I just laid out? Unfortunately, there is no black and white answer because all the variables are changing, like each person's level of need of liquidity, or the rate of inflation, and the interest rate set by the Fed. And lastly, are we in a recession, or are we about to exit a recession? Lots of unanswered questions. So here's what I plan to do. I'll go into the details of each of the short-term investments of the treasuries, the CDs, the I-bonds, and the high-yield savings accounts. And I'll spell out the pros and cons to give a comparison among each of them. After that, I'll walk through three examples of saving for a big event within two years, saving for an event like a trip within a year, and lastly, are you retired or near retirement age where you simply need a safe investment? I'll share my opinion on how I would save for each of those situations. Granted, your circumstances are going to be completely different, and the pros and the cons that I provide should help you set up more of a roadmap for how you can approach the opportunity that's specific to you. Now, what I do not plan to cover is how to purchase these assets. I have separate videos dedicated solely how to buy and invest in treasuries, CDs, I-bonds, and I also provide you the banks with the highest yield interest rates. So if you want deeper details along with tutorials on how best to purchase these assets, then please feel free to check out those other videos. I'll have links in the description below. With that covered, let's get started with treasuries. These assets are a debt security that is offered by the U.S. government that has a fixed interest rate and has a specific maturity date. Essentially, they're loans that you're giving the U.S. government with the expectation that they're going to give you back your principal along with a little bit of interest. Now, they come in three different flavors, but the, the key item to keep in mind is that they really vary in the time for maturity. And to start with, bills are assets that mature at one year or less, notes which mature between two and ten years, and bonds that mature between twenty and thirty years. Bills that mature at one year or less are a bit unique in the sense that they don't pay out interest on a regular interval, like the notes and the bonds. Instead, the bills are sold at a discount where you get the principal and the interest at the maturity date. For example, you buy a one-year bill worth $100 with a 4% return. You don't pay $100 and you don't get $104 at maturity. Instead, you pay roughly $96 and you get $100 at maturity because it is sold at a discount. When it comes to buying treasuries, you have two options. The first is that you can buy them from Treasury Direct, which happens to be a government site. But the site is clunky and people have often had issues with their passwords being reset that may require filling out paperwork and it may take a few weeks to fix. In addition, the government sells treasuries on a regular specific window that is referred to as an auction. You can buy them outright, like a normal transaction, or you can try to bid on them like an auction. Typically, only large institutions like banks and exchanges bid on large quantities of treasuries at an auction. And if you hold on to your treasury until maturity, then you get your money deposited straight back into your account. But if you want to sell them prior to the maturity date, it gets a bit trickier on Treasury Direct. You have to fill out paperwork to then have the treasury move to a bank or an exchange so that they can then be sold on the secondary market. And a bank or a broker may charge you a commission to sell them early. Before moving on to the second option for treasuries, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd consider pressing that like button if you get value from my content and let me know if I'm doing a good job. And please consider subscribing so you can be up to date with all of my latest investment and business related videos. Now let's move on to the second option of buying treasuries, which is from an exchange like Fidelity. On an exchange, you have the option to buy new treasuries, just like you would on Treasury Direct, or you can buy them on the secondary market. The secondary market is where individuals or banks may go to try to sell treasuries prior to their maturity date. And sometimes you can get a better deal on the secondary market, and there are always a ton of options, so make sure and check it out. Regardless of how you bought your treasury, there is a key item to consider when selling it on the secondary market. If you expect the rates to go down in the future, great. 
that puts you in a better position on your treasuries if you want to sell them early. And that's because when you bought your treasury, it was at a higher rate than it is in the future, which means you can sell your asset early with a premium bid because your rate is worth more than a new treasury is in the future. But that's only if the rates go down after you bought your treasury. And on the flip side, if rates continue to climb in the future, then the treasuries are worth more than the older ones at the lower rates. In that case, you would need to sell your treasury at a discount in order to sell it early. Let's jump in with the pros of treasuries. They are low risk investments since the rates are locked in and guaranteed. And the risk of the US government defaulting on their bills is, well, I'd say that's pretty low. The second is that you do not have to pay any state or local taxes on the interest that you earn. You still have to pay federal taxes, but if you live in a state where high income taxes, this pro may be key in your decision. Next is high liquidity. Treasuries can be sold on the secondary market, but it's easier if you bought them on an exchange versus treasury direct. You can also invest in treasuries with your tax advantage accounts like your 401k, your IRA, or your HSA if you buy them from an exchange or from a secondary market. And for the last pro, treasuries tend to have a higher rate than your savings account. And as for the cons, the interest rates are generally low. They lag behind inflation and they can't compare with the returns on the stock market over time. Next is the opportunity cost. If you have your money locked into treasuries, you may miss out on higher returns if the rates change or if the market starts to rebound. And lastly, since treasuries are offered at auction, they are sold at very specific windows of time. Now let's move on to CDs or certificate of deposit, which is a savings product that earns interest on the purchased over a fixed time frame and is very similar to treasuries. But CDs are a little bit more strict where the money must be kept in the investment until maturity. Otherwise, you will pay a penalty for an early withdrawal. Unless, of course, you sell them on the secondary market, but then you will incur some form of fee. Overall, with a CD, you're agreeing to invest your money for a fixed time period with a bank that is FDIC insured. And the more you invest and the longer the time period, the higher interest rate you're given from that lending institution. Because CDs are provided by banks and credit unions, there are a ton of CD options. So it's in your best interest to shop around. But similar to treasuries, you can also buy new and used CDs from an exchange like Fidelity. In my opinion, exchanges tend to offer the best rates on CDs and takes all the work out of having to shop around. However, the trade-off is that banks have compounding interest on their CDs, while an exchange pays a straight percent on the regular interval. The options for CDs are much greater than treasuries in that you can buy at any point and not have to wait on an auction time frame to invest. It's very transactional. Because of all the options for CDs, each institution can have their own set of terms and conditions tied to that CD. So make sure and read the fine print. Let's jump right in with the pros and cons for CD. For the pros, CDs are safe and guaranteed investment that is FDIC insured up to $250,000. Next, CDs have higher rates than a savings account. And the last pro is that you can also invest in them with your tax advantage accounts like your 401k, IRA, or your HSA. As for the cons, for CDs, the penalties for early withdrawals can be steep if you bought them from a bank. And if you bought them from an exchange, you can simply sell them on the secondary market. One major con that you need to be on the lookout for with a CD is, is it callable? If it's callable, that means that the bank can call in the CD and essentially give you your last interest payment and pay back all of your principal way before maturity, essentially canceling the CD at their discretion. And just like the treasury, they come with the risk of opportunity cost of holding up your cash and not investing in the stock market. CDs are also less liquid than a savings account due to the penalties and the fees if you try to take them out early. So far, one of the main key differences between a CD and a treasury is that CDs come with steep penalties if you sell them before maturity, and that is if you don't sell them on the secondary market market. And treasuries are tax advantage where you don't have any state or local taxes. But depending on where you live, that could be very important or not at all. Now we'll move on to I-bonds, which is similar to a treasury in that it is a loan to the U.S. government, but its sole purpose is to have a rate that changes every six months to counter the effects of inflation. In early 2022, the I-bond rates were at 9.62% for a full six months, and then it dropped down to 6.98% in November of 2022, which those rates are substantially higher than CDs or treasuries. And this may lead many people to to think, why not just dump all your money into I-bonds? Why do you even need treasuries or CDs? And the answer is simple. You can only buy $10,000 worth of I-bonds in a calendar year, or $15,000 if you utilize your tax return. And many people think that you can only buy them from Treasury Direct, but that recently changed. If you have an account with an online bank called Yada, and I, I know I'm saying that wrong, but nonetheless, you can also make your I-bond purchases through their website. But all the limitations on how much you can buy still applies even when you buy them through that online bank. I-bonds have a 
set maturity date of 30 years and they're meant for long-term investing and you are completely locked out from cashing them in the first year. After a year has passed, you can cash them in, but it does come with a penalty of forfeiting the last three months of your interest. With that covered, let's go over the pros for I-bonds. First off, they are a safe, guaranteed investment. The risk of the government defaulting on their loans is extremely low, just like on treasuries. They also do not have any state or local taxes tied to the I-bond interest, just like treasuries. And the last pro for I-bonds is the rates are much better than CDs or treasuries, simply because the inflation is so high. And for the cons, you have to hold them for a minimum of one year, resulting in liquidity handcuffs. Next, after waiting a full year, and if you choose to sell them early, then you do forfeit that 90 days worth of interest. Next, the interest rates changes every six months to account for the inflation. So you don't really have the same guarantee on your rates like you do with a treasury or a CD. And lastly, they have a $10,000 cap of purchases each calendar year. Now I'll move on to cover the high interest savings accounts. Then I'll walk through some example scenarios to show which investment option of treasury, CDs, I-bonds, and high interest savings accounts may be best for each circumstance. When it comes to high interest savings accounts, the best rates are going to be offered by the online only banks and credit unions. If you bank with someone like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, I hope you get great value out of going into that physical branch because those banks offer about 100 times less on their savings account rates. Yes, 100 times less at 0.02%, where you could be getting 3% with a bank like SoFi on their savings and checking account, or Ally, which has theirs at 2.75%. The good and bad news with high yield bank accounts is that they instantly change their rates to match the moves made by the Fed. At some point, the Fed will begin to drop rates and the banks will follow suit immediately. Plus. There are a lot of banks that offer introductory rates like the Digital Credit Union at 6.17%, but it's only up to $1,000. And some banks require that you have direct deposit or that you make a minimum amount of charges on your debit card each month. The point is that high yield bank accounts offer some great rates when the Fed has interest rates so high, but there is no guarantee how long the bank rates will hold. It is a very short term growth environment that falls way behind inflation. Now the pros with a high yield savings account is that the ease of access and the necessity. Most everyone needs a bank. And if you choose the right one for your needs, you should be making 50 to 100 times more than if you are with a bank like Wells Fargo. The next pro is the highest level of liquidity. You have immediate access to your cash as needed with little or no risk and certainly no penalties like CDs or with I-bonds. And you don't have to hassle with the secondary market like with CDs and treasuries. Plus, they should be FDIC insured up to $250,000. As for the cons, rates are extremely low for a savings account and it doesn't compare to CDs, treasuries, or definitely not I-bonds. Next, for some of the best rates available, banks have limitations on the amount that gets the introductory rate, or they have so many hoops to jump through that it isn't really worth your time. And lastly, the rates can fluctuate or change daily, good or bad. There's no guarantee that the rate you have today is going to be the same rate that you're gonna have next month. Next, I'll move on to real case situations and where I would choose to have my cash. Let's say that your family is planning a vacation to Disney in eight months, and you're setting aside about $8,000 for the trip. Some of you may be thinking that's an absurd amount, and well, I would agree with you, but when you factor in the costs of flying, hotel, food, and the park cost, it is a ridiculous amount of money. Trust me, I know firsthand. In this case, you wouldn't want I-bonds, C or treasuries because of the eight month window. I-bonds are locked out for the full year. Treasuries will force you to sell on the secondary market to cash out and you may lose money in the discounts and the fees. And CDs come with harsh penalties selling them early. In this case, I'd set aside the funds in a high yield savings account. There's no penalties when you withdraw and you have complete liquidity. For the next example, let's assume that you're planning a $50,000 kitchen renovation in two years. You have $26,000 saved up today outside of your emergency fund. And you're setting aside $1,000 each month until you hit the $50,000 goal in two years. Personally, I believe in diversity, so I would buy $10,000 in I-bonds because I know I'll get the 6.98% for the first six months, and I expect inflation to still be pretty high, at least greater than 4%, when they set the next six-month rate. I can safely lock in a full year without concern of actually needing that money. Now, let's say I live in a state with no income tax, so the advantages of buying treasuries and not having state taxes, it's completely lost on me. So in this case, I'm going to invest $16,000 in a two-year CD. I'm going with the CDs because it's less of a hassle and not having to deal with an auction with a treasury. And with the $1,000 I get each month that I'm setting aside for the next two years, I'd continue to buy CDs along with a portion going into a high-yield savings account just in case I needed access to some cash. And for the last example, let's say that I'm two years out from retiring and I can't risk losing any of my nest egg to all the stock market swings. I need stability from my investments. Outside of my IRA, let's say that I have $200,000 in my bank account. Keeping with the theme of diversity, I'll go ahead and buy $10,000 in I-bonds. Now in this example, let's say that I happen to live in a state with high income taxes. And with CDs and treasuries being similar in rates, 
It's in my best interest to buy treasuries because of the state income tax savings. I will then purchase $150,000 in treasuries, then I'll put $40,000 into a high yield savings account. Why $40,000? It's because that's six months worth of expenses and that happens to be my emergency fund that I can pull if anything happens to me or my job. That concludes my video on some of the best options on where to park your cash along with some examples. I hope you were able to get some value out of my video and please be smart with your money.